Have you heard of intuitive art? Intuitive art is used by a lot of artists as a way to discover new ways to communicate their awareness and understanding of their world. As an art therapist, I use it to help my clients to develop mindfulness, to practice meditation and to help them to become more aware of their feelings, subconscious thoughts and ideas. Let me show you how to get started with this powerful and yet easy art form. Hi there, today I would like to show you how to do intuitive art. And I've got some examples here for you that I did yesterday uh, just to illustrate to you exactly what intuitive art is all about. So for this art piece I really just used some watercolour and uh, just spread some water around and just decided on a specific palette uh, intuitively um, just mixed it up and played around with it in the water. And what is so nice about intuitive art is that you are not trying to create a specific product or a specific outcome. You're really just allowing yourself to express yourself and to give expression to what you're feeling in the moment. Afterwards, when you come back to it, or maybe even during the process, you might begin to recognize some patterns or some interesting um, you know, figures that appear in the art for you. And in this case, this quite looks like a dove. And it was really not my intention to paint, to paint a dove at all. Um, it's also good to just turn your art around a little bit and look at it from different angles and just to see what your subconscious mind is telling you and what pictures is coming uh, up for you. Like now when I've turned it around, this quite looks like a wild boar and this could be its teeth. Um, also, you know, just exploring some other minute details in this. I quite like how this little piece of uh, artwork turned out and just the play of the brush there. It almost reminds me, if I turn it around, like a little beetle or something. And uh, that is uh, actually, a, what shall we call it, a totem animal for me for 2020 so that's quite interesting that that emerged in this session so that's quite pretty I did another one at the same time and I worked with opposite colors and uh, here I also used a bit of salt to create texture in the watercolor because the salt allows a different drying time than the rest of the paper surrounding it so it creates these beautiful blooms that you can see here so I haven't really looked at this one so let's see what jumps out at us this can be an interesting face this almost looks like an eye and a bit of a beak or something with a bit of a comb wow what is this this actually looks like a butterfly in flight and again I didn't try to do anything in particular it just popped out at me that is spectacular that also looks quite like a face could also be a bit of a wild boar how do you, or a pig it looks like a pig's nose and the two eyes <laughs> i happen to be a boar in chinese astrology that's very interesting so what can you do with these pieces is you can frame them as they are and that's always something interesting, a piece of abstract artwork that's always interesting to look at or you can cut it up, create a collage or you can create a greeting card with it, whatever tickles your fancy or you can add another layer if something really jumps out at you and you want to focus more on that and um, you know make that stand out a little bit more. So, I'm going to show you today how to engage in a piece of um, intuitive art and I've got my block of watercolour paper here. So what you will need for this exercise, you can really work with any medium that you decide to, but I'm going to work with my watercolours. So I've got my watercolour palette all misted up and I've, I've sprayed it with some water to activate the paints and I'm going to be using um, 
what is this a three and a three a three eight this is an interesting number that's the size whatever that's called um, a dagger brush and why I like a dagger brush or a sword brush is because it sort of uh, doesn't allow you as much control as a normal round brush would um, you can also use a rigger brush a rigger brush is a brush with very long loose bristles like this that can also create very interesting patterns so the very first thing that I would suggest you do is to create a space for yourself where you can just be in a more mindful state of mind and working with watercolor I like to just prepare the ground um, and randomly place some water on a section so I'm going to try and zoom in here for you so that you have a better viewpoint as to what is going to happen on this piece of paper so you could um, you know cover this entire block <clears throat> with water but I say be random intuitive art is more about that surprise in expression rather than doing something very specific you don't have anything in mind in particular so I'm just gonna start playing with my favorite color this is dioxazine, dioxazine purple and as you can see with this dagger brush you have this very fine tip and then you've got the the roundedness of the back of the brush that you can create beautiful swirls with now with intuitive art there's no right there's no wrong like I said it is not about trying to create a specific outcome or a specific product so you don't need to have any art skill whatsoever for this it really is just a playful expression of your subconscious mind and you playing with colors that you love and you see where that takes you when you feel you have reached saturation with one particular color you can choose another one I'm going to use this cobalt turquoise and it's absolutely beautiful to see how the colors interact I'm going to turn it downwards like this and I'm just going to flick some splatter into the artwork. To help with some texture. So if you hear some noises in the background it is my puppy she's in a playful mood and i'm trying to create a video for you guys so don't mind that you know how pets can be they find the best time when you're trying to be productive to interact with you in some way so when you reach a stage in your playfulness where you feel that you have completed the picture or you are done expressing yourself or you feel that you've hit a wall where your cognitive thinking is trying to kick in and it's trying to tell you what to do or it's becoming critical of the work that you are creating that critical voice kicks in at some stage and it says now you're just making a mess of it whatever the case may be that's a good time to stop 
and just to tell that critical side of your mind, be quiet. You are not invited to the party because I'm not trying to impress you or anyone around me. I'm just trying to express myself and create some beautiful intuitive art. So that's a good time maybe to switch over to another piece of paper. Let me just move my paper here so that you can see better. I'm gonna have to use my, move my paint. There we go. Let me just make sure I'm in the middle of the camera so that you can see very clearly. And again, you can start with preparing the page with a bit of clean water and just randomly dot it around. There is no right or wrong. It always is helpful to use a good quality um, watercolor paper if you're going to be working with watercolor. And I prefer 100% cotton because the paper is just designed to absorb um, a lot more water and to take a lot more water. And for intuitive art exercises like this, that is ideal. So I'm going to play with a color that I don't particularly work with a lot. And uh, this is a beautiful um, burnt amber. I'm just gonna use the brush and just see what shapes it can help me to create. I love, absolutely love the way that uh, colors spread um, in the water one of my reasons why i love watercolor so much i'm just gonna blot that a little bit another interesting color is this intense gold i'm gonna mix it with a bit of orange looks like fire doesn't it so while you are engaging with intuitive art it's also a good thing uh, to be mindful of the quality of your mood what it is that you're thinking what feelings comes up for you because you know the psychology of color is a powerful thing and when we do this with awareness then this exercise can become quite fruitful in exploring your subconscious feelings and emotions that maybe you've been bottling up or that you're not aware of. I'm going to use some sepia, which is a nice dark brown. To create some contrast just allow some randomness to happen as well and the one nice thing about the watercolor medium and intuitive art is that the medium has a, a kind of magic to it. It continues to evolve as it dries and that aspect of it you've got um, very little control over unless you uh, expedite it by forcing it to dry faster. quite like the contrast there so I'm going to add some of this very powerful orange again and 
I use that because I know it can push color away. Hello girl, we are painting Rama darling, yes. Absolutely stunning. I'm gonna stop there. It's also that moment where you recognize that you have hit a wall or that you have encountered a block or you just feel satisfied with what you've created thus far. It's a good time to stop and to pause, allow the art to dry and then come back to it and have another look at it when it's done. So I'm going to just zoom out and show you a quick top view of these two and I'll be back just now and welcome back so the art is dry now I've used my hair dryer just to speed things up and I would just like to showcase what we have created thus far so let's begin with the first one so I haven't done anything more to it I just allowed it to dry but you can see what I mean with the power of watercolor as you know the magic of it continues to happen during the drying process and in exploring this little piece of artwork that we created here it really feels to me like there's the energy of a dragon that was captured here it almost looks like its eye and its face shape there with its teeth and then you've got its mane and its body shape that comes around here so it's definitely definitely something that you can then enhance with another layer of watercolor to absolutely accentuate that and to bring that to the foreground so that the viewer can see that but let's turn the art around and see what it looks like from a different angle and see if anything jumps out at us it almost looks like a tornado to me I love this light and the intensity of the color over there but right now almost maybe like a scorpion a scorpion this its claws and its beak and then you have the tail coming around so one way to sort of continue with this uh, therapy process is then to go to your google search and to type in the meaning of scorpion or the meaning of a dragon and you will be quite surprised to find how much material you can find on your google search that will help you to explore the symbology of the animal or the insect or the the image or symbol that you are finding within your work and to start to explore that a little bit further let's look at the other one i just love the colors it reminds me of a of a sunset in africa there's also quite interesting patterns that emerge here so one of the tips that i can give you in intuitive art try not to cover the entire page with color try to leave some white spaces where you can break it up with some fine line work like you see over here because sometimes that is all you need to begin to see some patterns that you haven't seen before to me in a way it almost looks like a bit of a lion i've got a bit of a mane here with a bit of an interesting face over there that could be its hind body a little bit of a tail and then its feet let's turn it around sometimes things become more clear when you turn it from a different angle to me i'm, I'm seeing a bit of a snake head or a fish head over here and as we continue to turn it this also looks very interesting in a way it looks like a very decorative squid or um, what are those uh, jellyfish kind of thing if you take that as its head and then just this is the tentacles so again something that you can bring out if you want to you don't have to there's also an interesting shape emerging over there so the whole point is then to just mindfully spend some time with the art and um, just to get an idea of what it is trying to communicate with you maybe journal about it and like i said go into a google search and type in those search words 
and uh, explore the meaning of, of the symbology that was communicated to you by your subconscious and you will be quite amazed at what interesting information is revealed to you. Please share your artwork that you are creating with me on Instagram. My handle is hashtag uh, Gideon's Light. And please also remember to subscribe and feel free to share some comments with me. I would love to hear your thoughts on how you experienced this, this video and also this artwork. And I'm looking forward to spending more quality art therapy time with you in the future. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.